I know this steak doesn't exist. What's up, my name is Seem. Hope you're having a great day. And I was cooking here my dinner. And I was thinking about, you know, a lot of people have been asking me about what do I think about the carnivore diet? What's, you know, this eating all just meat? Is it any good? What are my thoughts? And so far, I haven't given any answers to it. So in this video, I decided to kind of explain to you what are my thoughts on the carnivore diet and why does the carnivore diet work? Why are so many people seeing so many results from it and why are they doing it? So let's get on with it. Just give me all the bacon and eggs you have. So basically the carnivore diet is, you know, sounds very simple. You just eat animal products. The majority of them are going to come from like stuff like meats, fish, eggs some dairy, some cheese maybe, and uh, in general, it's only animal products. Well, the carnivore diet is like a hardcore elimination diet, and um, the reason it does work so well is that you eliminate all the potential inflammatory foods and potential allergens from your diet that may lead to some sort of GI distress, some weight gain, some brain fog, some some allergic reactions, whatever they may be. You simply eliminate all the potential danger foods and in so doing you're gonna allowing your body to function in a much more optimal way and you're gonna be healthier that's also the reasons why this works you know if you're not putting inflammatory stuff into your body then you allow your body to heal itself and if you're constantly dipping in these you know processed foods and even some allergens into your gut then eventually it's gonna cause some gi distress some gut dysbiosis and it's also gonna damage the intestinal linings of the gut wall which is gonna lead to like leaky gut brain fog and all other autoimmune disorders so if you have like very serious autoimmune issues then doing the carnivore diet can be very good and can be very effective in kind of going through this detox phase where you eliminate all the potential dangers and you allow your body to heal itself and it's going to be very effective. The truth is that there are a lot of potential inflammatory foods in our diet and inflammation sources in our environment already. Things like air pollution, some GMOs, poor air quality, poor water quality and a lot of very iffy and you know questionable foods even healthy foods you might think like okay I, I can eat some tomatoes but you don't know that tomatoes have actually a lot of lectins that in large amounts can actually cause intestinal impermeability and cause leaky brain it's gonna cause leaky gut syndrome and it's gonna cause brain brain inflammation so yeah like even healthy foods tend to cause some issues for most people tomato some of the foods you definitely want to avoid are things like gluten, grains, legumes, beans and nightshade in particular for some people and soy as well like those things they cause a lot of stress and problems for most people so that's why eliminating them is a good idea no matter what diet you're following and at least you know sticking to them in very small amounts. It's also the truth that plants have these anti-nutrients in them even vegetables like that are supposed to protect the plant from being eaten and they do cause mild intestinal stress in the human body. Meat itself is very easily digestible and it's not going to cause any inflammation basically if you eat only, only just meat. But there are also some healthy compounds in vegetables and plant products that you don't get from animals like sulforaphane which are directly connected to longevity and increased lifespan in many, in many species. Anti-cancer properties of broccoli, you know. So it's never just that plants are bad or that meat is good, most of the results from the carnivore diet come from the elimination of inflammation or the suppression of these constantly dripping of these inflammatory responses inside your gut. It doesn't say that you can't achieve the same results by doing some sort of other types of diets or you kind of fixing the loopholes of other sources of stress in your life. Because in my opinion, you, you know, the, although the carnivore diet is very popular at the moment, you know, a lot of people are kind of taking the easy way out from it. They're kind of, okay, I'm just going to eat meat. Okay, this is very effective in terms of promoting satiety, which is going to promote ketosis to a certain extent as well. It's going to make them feel less bloated. It's going to cause less intestinal stress on them as well. But at the same time, I feel like they're kind of being lazy about it in terms of not fixing the root cause of what is the causing the inflammation in the first place. It's not just food as well. Things like sleep disorders, blue light exposure at night, 
too much work, toxic relationships, not being mindful in general, not being satisfied with their life, having negative self-talk, those are all things that are still gonna eventually cause some troubles for the person switching to a carnivore diet may be a short-term fix in allowing the body to heal the gut and get better but as a long-term thing it shouldn't be something that you would want to be you know riding your ways on i have taken a picture of every steak i've ever eaten there. me personally i'm not judging anyone who is doing the carnivore diet or something like that and i th and i do think that animal products are the best suitable food groups for the human body like you know butter meats fish eggs uh, organ meats and uh, things like that they are very healthy and they're optimal for the human physiology it's what we evolutionary well evolved to eat and uh, it's very suitable for our modern diet as well and i do think that one of the best things you can do for your gut microbiome and overall health is to cycle through different kinds of diets you never want to be strict keto for the rest of your life never strict carnivore for the rest of life strict vegan for the rest of life or strict paleo for the rest of life because you're going to cause some gut dysbiosis and you're actually going to promote the probability of causing inflammation from eating different foods if you don't eat those foods like People become gluten intolerant just because, first of all, gluten is bad. Yeah, but second of all, their gut isn't able to handle gluten. Like, you never want to live in fear. You know, you don't want to live in fear of eating certain foods. Or, oh, maybe I'm afraid of eating too many carbs on keto. Maybe I'm going to get kicked out. I'm afraid of eating gluten. I'm afraid of eating legumes or some tomatoes. You, know, you don't want to be afraid of plants. You don't want to be afraid of meat or you don't want to be afraid of any types of foods you want to have anti-fragility in terms of being able to metabolize these different foods without having to worry that you're going to get an autoimmune disorder and one of the key ways of promoting this kind of anti-fragility is to first remove the inflammation from your gut heal the gut then strengthen the gut by eating a quite balanced diet in terms of polyphenols and uh, also making sure that you have like other lifestyle factors covered you definitely don't want to be eating like gluten every day or some some beans all the time you want to make sure that your gut is healthy in the long term of being able to metabolize them without running into issues calories that's a gluten so that's why i think it's a very good idea to cycle in and out of ketosis to cycle in and out of carnivore or whatever it may be for you and to constantly keep your body guessing by maintaining its anti-fragility meat or potatoes so the key takeaways from this video should be that if you have like trouble losing weight if you have some inflammation bloating constipation uh, joint pains whatever they may be then the root cause comes from the inflammation in your gut because the gut is the second brain and it's literally like 70 percent of your immune system is located there the solution to fixing those problems is to fix the inflammation you can do a short-term carnivore kind of elimination diet to see how your body responds but whether or not you're gonna stay for it longer than that depends on your own personal preference. I'm not gonna judge you, but you know, keep in mind that there are still some quite good health benefits on eating vegetables. And if you process them right, then you can definitely structure a much more optimal and much more sustainable way of eating. You're gonna be better in the long term by implementing at least some plant foods. And me personally, I'm eating a well-balanced keto diet with some definitely a lot of you know animal products fish eggs meat organ meats in particular and uh, also like plant products like you know broccoli some cucumbers some salads spring onions red onions garlic fermented foods avocados lemons those are like superfoods blueberries you know <laughs> do you really want to avoid blueberries for the rest of life no no you don't you want to gain the amazing health benefits from those so you know whatever it may be what i said was Give me all the bacon and eggs you have. Let me know in the comment section below what are your thoughts on it, what are your experiences with it, and uh, definitely click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Sim, thanks for watching. Stay anti-fragile, stay empowered. The best damn steakhouse in the damn state.